theft is big business. It's estimated that it's worth more than three billion pounds a year. In the same league as drugs, money laundering and the illegal arms trade. And only about 10% of stolen art is ever recovered. I'm about to meet an art collector I know, Ivan Massau, who's agreed to help me with this TV project. All he knows is that I'm here to offer a wager. I would love to steal one of your paintings. OK. You have an exhibition coming up? I do, yeah. Which is? It's at the Truman Brewery. It's for Action for Children, an uh, exhibition of the Chapman Brothers' work. I know the Chapman Brothers very well. In fact, we filmed with them a few years ago. I really love their work. So I propose a wager. I'll tell you the painting that I'm going to steal, right. the day that it will happen on, okay. the exact time that it will occur. I'll even give you a picture of the person who's going to steal it, because okay. it won't be me. And you can hire in whatever security you'd like. I know the painting's worth quite a bit of money. And you can pass all that information on to your security. But I'll still get away with it. Right. In fact, there'll be a member of your staff who'll help us leave with the painting. <laughs> Bet you a pound that I can get away with it. Okay, you want. A pound? A pound. Excellent, thank you. Then listen carefully. The painting is one day you will no longer be loved. The day it'll happen is next Wednesday. That's a week today. And it will happen at exactly 3 o'clock in the afternoon. All right? And the picture of the person who's going to do it is in there. You might want to pass it on to security. Okay. Thank right. you, Ivan. I'll see you next week. If I'm going to steal a painting from a gallery, I'll need to recruit a team of specialists from across the country. I need people who have a unique set of skills. People with a particular type of experience. People who are all around us all the time, but remain hidden and are not given a second glance. Hello, I'm Darren. I'm Darren. Lovely to meet you. Pleased to meet on. you. Old age pensioners. There are 10.8 million people over the age of 65 in the UK. In fact, there are more pensioners than there are people under the age of 16. My aim with this show is to remind us that older people have far richer stories to tell than the rest of us. And we don't stop being interesting just because we turn 65. So I advertise for people who've retired from work but aren't quite ready to retire from an active life. From the hundreds that applied, I've put together a team with what I hope will be the perfect mix of skills. And today, I'm meeting them for the first time over a lovely cup of tea. Thank you so much. And how about the biscuit? Very much so. Thank you. Do you think there are issues or concerns about how people of a certain age are treated or viewed? Oh, many yeah, issues yeah. and many concerns, yes, absolutely. Perhaps that. particularly as an older woman, you definitely become more and more invisible. Yes, you're just a dear little old lady. It's that sense of invisibility that fascinates me and that I hope to use to my advantage. You try and get to a bus stop and everyone pushes you aside, you know. Why do you think that is? Do you think there's a reason for it or is it just what we used well, to? Well, we, we live in a couldn't care less society, don't we? And I think mm. this is a reflection of it. If you imagine yourself at 65 or 75, I'm sure you see a person with enormous value and who's still full of surprises. And Domino. Is that it? Yeah, five pound again. You got your pounds? <laughs> <laughs> when I was younger, women particularly suddenly got old, either when the children left home, you know, to get married, or when they turned 40, mm. and then again when they lose, if they lose their husband, you know? Mm. I mean, it's got to be said as you go through life, you never, ever think you're going to wake up one morning and you're 65. Mm. How old do you feel? I feel about 38. 38? Aye. Yeah, sort of grown up, but... Aye. Yeah. So far, they've got no idea what I have planned for them. I'm really hoping they're going to agree to help me win this wager. I've got a plan, um, which I'd love you to be part of, if you're up for it. You've got a plan? I have a plan. That sounds like the start of a film or a book. I'm hoping to make a wager with an art collector. The plan is I would like you to steal a painting from an exhibition. 
Wow. <laughs> Fantastic. You up for it? Yeah. You are? What about the police? What about the police? The, we'll take care of the police. We I don't will. want to end up with a criminal record. No, 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 no you won't. <laughs> well, yeah. Yes, certainly. Yeah. I don't see why not. Ah, why not? Let's have a laugh. Please, you're on board. Thank you. I've never stolen anything before, except maybe the odd borrow from work that comes home. Uh, that's not really stealing, is it? People don't think that older people are capable of doing things like this. I've never done anything quite as cheeky in my life. Is it daring or daring? I'm not sure. Stealing the painting, I think it is absolutely fabulous. God, I hope I get away with it. <laughs> I've got a bus pass, and straight away they'll say to the friend, oh, it's an old chap in. I might as well try to uh, be a baddie for once in my life. So that's my team of pensioners, not career criminals at all, but their combined life experience means that they already have all the skills they need in place to steal a painting from an art gallery. I just need to help them focus those skills and use the way that they are seen or not seen by society as a strength. I've asked the team to join me in London for the start of their month-long journey. I want to show them some of the principles they'll need to use when it comes to stealing the painting. All of us, then. cards. Thank you all for coming in. You'll all know this. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa. La Gioconda. Stolen uh, from the Louvre in 1911. Mm -hmm. uh, probably the most famous painting in the world. The story of the theft is quite interesting. The, the guy that did it was an Italian called Vincenzo Perugia. And he shot himself in a broom cupboard on a Sunday night in the gallery, knowing that the place was going to be closed on the Monday for cleaning. So early hours of the Monday morning, he comes out the cupboard, takes this off the wall, gets to the, the front door and can't let himself out because it's locked. So brilliantly, he smashes the doorknob off from the inside and then goes and finds a member of staff and says, the doorknob's been stolen, can you let me out? You know, he's doing this with the, with the Mona Lisa, which is under his arm. So this member of staff sorts the door out and lets him out and he walks out with it. The best part for me is the fact that for a full day after this happens, there's a big gap on the wall and no one notices. The Mona Lisa's gone, no one says anything until uh, a visitor mentioned it to a member of security and said, oh, what's happened to the Mona Lisa? And the security guard says, oh, I think it's being photographed. So nobody paid any attention to it. It is amazing how much you miss, even though it's happening right in front of you. So let me show you what I mean. I'll give you an example. An ordinary deck of 109 playing cards. 109? Mm. Mm. And uh, Pauline, if you don't mind, would you take one out for me? Anyone you like. Just grab one out for me. Anyone you like. Thank you. Have a look at it with your eyes and show the others. Thank you very much indeed. Great. Thank you. Pop that back in. Uh, I'll show the camera as well. Do please remember it, otherwise I'll have to put you in a home. So, uh, <laughs> you want to change your mind, by the way? You happy with that one? You happy it's a free choice? Yeah, I'm happy with that. So, Rachel, or all of you, watch. Watch carefully. What was the card, by the way? What was it? Six of diamonds. Six of diamonds. If I... Do this, it should disappear. Now, if you look out for a six of diamonds, there shouldn't be one there. Six of diamonds, there'll be a six of hearts, of course. So you might see a red mm -hmm. six. No six of diamonds, I don't think. It's disappeared, disappeared from the deck and reappeared under there. Now, look, yeah. I'll show you, I'll push that out of the way. Can you see there is one card underneath the box? The six. <laughs> wow. Of wow. Thank you very much indeed. You're very kind. Thank you. Rachel, just point anywhere you like on the spread. If I spread those out anywhere you like. Could be in the middle or on an... OK, that makes it a little more difficult, but I'll slip it in there. OK, watch. Watch carefully. Little click. The Six of Diamonds disappears one more time and reappears. There it is, under the box. Once again, the Six of Diamonds. You're very kind. I do know... Thank you. I, I know from experience I won't get away with it a third time, because obviously all you do is just is look at the box. Mm. So uh, I do something a little different. Um, Rachel, can I borrow your finger? If you, would you mind just flat on top like that, on top of the six, but just not too hard, but just enough so you know I can't get to it. I'll get rid of the rest of the cards. We don't need them, because otherwise you'll, be, you'll just be watching them, so I'll get rid of those. Um, and I'll try and make the card now disappear from under your hand and reappear in my pocket underneath the, uh, underneath the box. So hand flat on top of it, please. OK, here we go. I believe the six has disappeared. Slowly lift your hand up and out the way. 
Okay, technically that has disappeared. What was it again? The six of diamonds. Six of diamonds. It's now changed to the nine of hearts. So technically the six of diamonds has disappeared. And in my pocket, no, no box. Ah, Jesus, on the table. There it is. <laughs> Under the box, the six of diamonds. Thank you very much indeed. Good. Now, believe it or not, that is in fact how we are going to steal the painting. Oh. Any of you see the Mona Lisa go? Oh. Oh, no. That's how we're going to do it. Good. Right. Amazing. Mystified, quite annoyed with myself. I knew one had to keep eyes on everything. And of course, you don't. It's amazing what you can miss when your attention is directed elsewhere. Underneath. It just goes to show that with diversion, it's possible to remove things right from under people's noses. How do I feel? The sort of stock answer to that is, oh, I still feel 21 at heart. No, I don't. When I was 21, I was very green, very shy. Thank God I don't feel like that anymore. I just feel 74, and that's good. I love being retired. I love being able to do things because I want to do them, because that's something I feel passionately about, perhaps, or just interested in. Expectations of the old should be challenged. Stereotypes of the dear little old lady. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. And I wonder what kind of a tangled web I'll be getting into. On the day of the robbery, it's only a few weeks away, Ivan and his security guard will be watching the painting like hawks. So the only way to steal it is through misdirection. So I need to teach our team how to control people's attention. Um, so we're going to work up to a painting, but today we're going to start off with something a little more manageable. Afternoon. Hello. 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 Come bring yourself you. round here. Lovely to see you all. Um, welcome to Brighton. Thank you. Yeah. Lovely day. Such a nice day, haven't we? It is very nice, isn't it? Um, we've withheld lunch from you for a good reason. Today you're going to learn about misdirection and distraction and working together as a team. Right. The task today is to steal chips. <laughs> Should be fun. Yeah. So we have a place set up, a fish and chip place over there, which we're filming with hidden cameras. So you can approach people, you can ask for directions, you can ask for help. I'll let you work out your own strategies. You've got to pilfer as many as you can. And it will be boys versus girls. Oh, so Joe and Tony, you're going to be up first. All right? right? That's fine. Great, so I'll let you work okay. out your strategies over here. Okay. Ladies, come with me. Well, Joe, what do you think? Right, Tony, well, it's a game of distraction, for what it seems. Right. Are you good at stealing or are you good at distracting? That's the question. Um, well, I think I'm... I'm what good at distracting. Perhaps. You distract, I'll steal and them. You nick the chips. Yeah, yeah. As long as you don't eat them all. <laughs> Let's go. Joe and Tony seem pretty confident without really having worked out a strategy. But a good story is key here and choosing the right target. What about this block here on his own? Yeah, but which way will you go for the chips? Which way do you want to go? Just admire his bike. It's a falcon. Sorry, mate, how, how many gears is your falcon? How many? Yeah. This one, is it, um... I can't... I can't, can't, can't taste your chip? No. No. Sorry, mate. Caught red-handed on their first attempt. Right, come on, Tony. But they're taking full advantage of the fact they're pensioners. No one expects them to be up to no good. I grabbed one and he saw me. <laughs> 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 Just look at the map, Tony, as though, as though we're naturally or it were lost. No, I Excuse thought... me, young man. Are you local? I'm not so you, you can't help me with the... Uh, I'm trying to find Hollingbury Park, because, you know, I was looking up there. Wasn't that the pier that burned down? Yeah. So where is Hollingbury Park compared to that, do you know? Because I was thinking it must be there, I'm not Where, sure. Whereabouts are we on there, Tony? Well, You're we're the, here, are we, in West Pier? They got one chip. <laughs> right, we'll go up this way, Tony. Yeah, we'll try yeah. that side. Thanks and go a lot, up. Just one. Oh, look, that's solid gold, that, mate. <laughs> so it's mischievous as it gets, because that's, in essence, what it's all yeah. about, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Magnificent. Rather than putting it on the table, Hold it up like that so you cover the chips. So you're providing a screen, does that make sense? Come on, pretend we, we lost. I can't yeah. work that out. Can you not find it? No, I can't find it. this lady. Excuse she... me, young lady. Can you help me a little bit? I'm a little bit lost. Are we here somewhere? See this Hollingbury Park? Where is that in relation to where we are? Miles away. Oh, are we? 
They've taken her last chips. Right, thanks very much for your help. Thank, Thank you. you. So at the moment you've got three to beat. Not bad for the gents, and using one thing to hide another, like the map, will be a useful skill later on. So let's see how the ladies do. Oh, there's a cover on his own. Yes, he looks gents. really good. OK, ready He's to go? on the phone, I think, at the moment. Even better? Yeah. Come on, then. Here they go. Come on, then. Oh, sorry, are you on the phone? I'm looking for Adelaide Crescent, which I believe is, is down this way. Do you know where it is? Um, I've been here for a long time, but I'm really, really bad with treatment. So... Uh, OK. Don't worry. Um, uh, I'll try someone else. Never, really. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, let, let's try somebody else. Or um... <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I think exhilarating is the word. Excuse me. Do you know how to use these sort of phones? I need a photograph. You're pretty bad at that sort of thing. Well, that's no answer. <laughs> Well, I can't even get it on to photograph. I don't know. Can you just come further up so that I need a good photograph of over there somewhere? So can you? Yeah, just from there at the fine. I should have waited longer, but you got her eyes on me. Look at that! <laughs> so it's three yes. plus one, isn't it? Yes, it's three plus one. So you guys actually got four. We yes. did. You are the champions. Congratulations, oh, ladies. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> so I guess uh, lunch is on you. Yes. Well, lunch on the boys. Yes. Let's go and eat. <laughs> no. No. Let's go and eat. A good day's work. Well done, I think. What do you think? I think you did really well, Pauline. <laughs> I don't feel that I'm growing old at all. I feel quite young in many ways. Maybe because I don't act old and I still flirt, you see. Time has no meaning to me, and it doesn't worry me at all. I know I'm going to come back anyway. I may come back as a spider. When you've got belief like that, getting old doesn't worry you. My life in Brunswick Gardens is very varied, but the highlight would have to be being crowned the first Miss Brunswick Gardens. I do trust Darren implicitly, and I'm sure it's going to be a good plan. And we're going to get away with it. So although they don't realise it, our pensioners have learned a lot of crucial skills today which they will need if they're going to successfully steal a painting from Ivan Massow's exhibition. But that's the last bit of fun they're going to have for a while. With the day of the robbery only a few weeks away, things have to get a lot more serious now. So tonight, you're going to need these. Excuse me. Now, I want to ramp up that feeling of, of criminality and to take you a step nearer the sort of feelings you're going to have to deal with when you are stealing a real painting from under the nose of a real security guard. All right? I've given the pensioners cases full of spray paint and pointed them towards a large white wall to do their worst. We're filming all this covertly and from a distance there's a very real chance the team will get challenged by angry local residents. What they spray is completely up to their imaginations. Ooh, yeah. Oh, there you are. Oh, I can't see now. My glasses are all steamed up. Yes. Oh, I'm steaming up now. Going here. Yes, love. An unexpected member of the public is voicing his objections. <laughs> oh, we're just no, having a bit right. of fun. It's OK. We're artists. We're well, having artists a bit of fun. People from the council are holding health and stuff. You know he's going to put police. Has he gone for police? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Can you put the can down, please? OK. Yeah. Nothing wrong. It's uh, art society. Step away from the cans, please. Art society. Yeah. Yeah. 
freedom of expression. Step yeah, away from the cat. Okay. Got any form of identification yeah. on you? Yeah. Sorry, officer. I'm being kept out of the way Sorry. while the producers go in and explain. We're filming for Channel 4. Sorry, we did. We've got permission to do it. Okay. Okay. It's right. Give us a second, guys. Oh. Uh, we basically were told we didn't need it, so we've we've, we've got all the proper permissions. Um, just trying to sort it out. So basically, I've got criminal damage. Very serious. There's a misunderstanding. <laughs> it's very Excuse me, who you are, sir? Sorry, I'm I'm the exec producer. Right. Could you go so, and talk uh, to my colleague, please? Yeah, I have, but I just, just I just need to I edge. just need to reassure these guys. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> yeah, but just give me two seconds. Sorry, can it will be fine. Can I have your name, please? Yeah, 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 fine. Yeah, fine. Is that Anthony? <laughs> no, uh, no, Andy, if I can do a quick one. Yeah. You did that. Let me inform local police, won't you? Right. My uh, colleague's been on to control. We're normally told about this sort of thing. Yeah. All right. Right. Because he's saying it's for a film. Yeah. But I can't allow that sort of thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Therefore. Listen in. I'm arresting the four of you on suspicion of criminal damage. Mm -hmm. I do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. Unfortunately, they're not interested in any so further discussion. But anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand that one? Yep. yep. Yeah. Okay, guys. The microphones and cameras, 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 cameras as well. Cameras yeah. as well. The microphones okay. and cameras. Yeah. I'm not going to touch that, but what we'll do is we can get that sorted out when we get back to the Nick. Okay. Come with me. I'm so sorry, guys. This is honestly. Okay, fine. It's fine. all right. Fine. Excuse me. I can't breathe. Can you just let us get okay. some air, please? Excuse me. I can't. I'm having difficulty breathing. Can you just let us get okay. some air, please? Oh, no, I can't breathe. He's saying he can't breathe. Devin, you should get in there. Excuse me. I can't let this go any further. OK, let's stop this. Can I come out? Come on, it's OK. Come out, come out, come out. You are joking. <laughs> yep. Can you Can we get the ladies out as well? Can we get the ladies out too? Oh, blimey. Terrible. That's not No. I thought that was running along. Pauline, come in. Um, Thank you. OK. These are not real police. It's fine. You can breathe. It's all all right. I did this because I needed you to have the experience of getting caught so you would know what that was like, so that if it happens on the day, you won't panic. It won't happen again. All right. <laughs> no, I just needed you to know. Yes. Obviously, if it does happen on the day, it will, these are real security people on the day. These are not real policemen. These okay. are actors. But on the day, it will be real security. But I just needed They're you to go through. They're very good. They're very good, aren't they? <laughs> are they? <laughs> but I just needed you to go through that now so you'd have that experience of yes. it. So you've dealt with that now already. Thank you. OK? Yeah. Forgive me? Yes. All right. So, Just about. So they're all actors? Yeah. It was extremely well done because I was well taken in with that. Well, say hello. <laughs> hello. 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 Hey, you fella, you get out. Okay, all right. right now. <laughs> Nothing bad here. Yeah, just doing my okay. job. <laughs> Tony's a bit shaken now, but this is an experience that will be crucial for him on the day of the robbery. Being on stage with my rock band in the 60s, playing at the Palais, those are all the highlights of my life. The lowest ebb was when my wife passed away. There was nothing I could do to save her. Certainly, I've missed my wife every second since she died. But life must go on. I see myself as a person who is constantly reliable, someone who is flexible and adaptable to every situation. The opportunity that Darren's given me is marvellous. And that's what makes life exciting. I, I, I would have been bailing you Did you really you think that we would have gone into a, a cell that night? Because yeah. I did. Yeah, you'd have gone to court and said, I'm There's one more specific skill I need someone from the team to learn. It will play a vital role in the art theft, which is now only a couple of weeks away. So, Tony, Joe, um, there's something I need you both to learn, and this will play a specific role in our art theft. You'll be playing the part of an old man with heavy shopping who needs help across the road. 
if you just lift your arm up like that, I can, sorry, I can just hang on, nice and strong, I can hang on to you. Right. It's also going to give you a chance to play up to people's preconceptions of older people and use that to your advantage. Thank you, sir. You've got arthritis or something. Oh, no, I'm a little... Oh, 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 sorry. I've got, Are sorry. you all right? I've got, I've got to be ever so careful. I've got to be come ever on, so careful. Come on, come on, come on. And the reason why I've chosen you for this is that you both play instruments. You play the guitar. Yes, I do. And you play the tuba. Yeah. And it's that dexterity with your fingers that's going to be useful here as well. Now, do you know, is that the post office out there? Is, that, is it that way yeah. to the post office? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, thank you for your help. Sorry okay. to take your time. Okay. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm going to teach you how to steal a watch. No. What? Off someone's wrist. Goodness. Never. So, did you feel much? No. Good, isn't it? <laughs> Good. God. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Excellent. Come on, I'll show you how it's done. Now, it's all about breaking it down into stages. So forgetting at the moment the, the walking and the things that I'm doing with the shopping bag, yeah. that gives you the cover that you need. So first thing is, your thumb goes there and your middle finger goes round to find the end of that strap. Next thing you want to do is just get the strap out of those little loops. And all that is, is that this middle finger just works it up like that. The next step is the fiddly bit. And this is where I did a little stumble, which gives me a bit of, a bit of cover, because you've actually got to give a little, little tug to the strap. So I need to get this strap back so this pin pops out. You're just pulling the strap up, and as you pull it up, you move it off to one side just a little bit, and you can see that pin just pops out. That's all you need. But because this is off to one side now, it means these holes aren't in line with the pin, so the pin can't go back in. Does that make sense? Because the next stage is now, I'm still keeping my thumb on the face of the watch, is to roll this down and out. So can you see, it's still that middle finger is basically doing this work. So I'm now, it's now hanging off. I've got it, it's just still on his wrist. And then the last bit is simply distract them whilst taking the watch. And if you like, you can say, sorry, I took your time. Stumble, there you go. I spent several hours rehearsing the routine with Tony and Joe. Now, when you're ready to start pulling that strap up, that's when you hand me the bag. That bloody thing slipped again. <laughs> keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, oh sorry. And then sent them off to practice the moves at home. Thank you very much, That's all right. It's a busy life. The phone's always hot. I'm up and about most days. There's brass band, there's my dance team, there's socialising in the local pub. Cheers. Cheers, my dear. Having an enthusiasm for life is important and you should be able to uh, bring that to anything that you're asked to uh, do. We'll be going on drunk, John. Good. I can be an enthusiastic member and uh, have a positive input. That's the way that I've always been all my life. After a week at home practising his watch stealing, Joe seems the most confident. I've brought him back to London to try out his skills on the public. So, Joe, you've had almost a week of being out of practice. The watch stealing, how's it been going? It's uh, been a bit of fun. Yeah? Who have you tried on? Friends in the pub, mainly. And with success? Uh, just one. OK. After several attempts. Right. Well, we have a zebra crossing down there. That's where you're going to be asking for help across the road. Right. We also have um, a little camera unit down there. Can you see them? Oh, yeah. And they're going to be stopping people and just doing like a little survey, and they're going to ask people for the time. So right. they're going to see if someone's wearing a watch. If right. they are, they'll ask a couple of questions and then send them on their way and give you a thumbs up so you know at least that that person is wearing a watch. OK. All right? Yeah. How are you feeling about doing this today on a real member of the public? I'd be daft if I said I weren't nervous. Yeah. But uh, you've trained me up, so I'm going for it. Uh, yeah, well, good luck. It's going to be nerve-wracking watching you, I think, but I'm sure you do a great job. Right, off you okay. go. Lovely. See you in a OK, radio. OK, Thank darling. You. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. The targets here don't know that Joe is involved in the filming, and they've got no idea he's trying to steal their watch. Young man, young man, will you see me over the road, please? Yeah. Please, will you help me? Yeah. I've been terrified. I nearly got killed yesterday. No way. You, are you all right? Yeah, no way. Just, just, just hold this bag for me, will you? No. Hold on. We're okay. going a bit too fast here now. OK. Are we all right? OK. Thank you very much, no young worries. man. Thank you. Bye-bye. Couldn't get strap out at Alder then. Sorry, lads. It's only had a week to practice, so it's difficult. It's very tough. Young man, young man, will you see me over the road, please? Yeah. Just, just let me have your arm. Got a bad hip. Don't rush me, will you? No, of course not. Don't just worry. give me your arm, will yeah, you? Of course. I nearly got killed here yesterday. Don't worry, don't worry. You can come on this way. 
No, I'd sooner stand here. Are you all right? A little bit, yeah, yeah. Come on, we'll be all right. I'm very bad if I have a really, really, really had a fall. Oh, oh. Me. Right. You're okay. Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. You're good. good. You've yeah. got strong hands on you, lad. Thank you very You're much. You're right. Yes, okay, thank you. Care. Okay, bye. Didn't get the pin out. Thank you, have a nice day. All right, Bob. Bye. He sussed it straight away. I think that guy was too savvy, wasn't he? He wasn't having it. No success so far, but it's not for want of trying. Joe's giving it his absolute best. One more go, I think. Will you see me over the road, please? Just give me your arm, if you don't mind. I've had an operation. I nearly got, oh, really? I nearly got killed oh, here. Really? You see. I've had a hip operation, you see. And Take your time. Slow down, slow down. Don't rush me. I know I've got to watch that. Watch out. Don't rush me, lad. He's forgetting everything. Thank you very much. You're welcome. OK, pal. Thank you. Got it out, Luke. He felt it coming off. It's getting very cold as well. I guess he's probably his fingers are... I think we have to knock this on the head, don't we? OK. So not much luck? Not much luck at all. Let me take that from you. Thank you. So, uh... What was it like? Were you kind of... Did you tell what was going wrong, it, or was it just... It wasn't that I, I, I was frightened of, of approaching my public or my, my target. Yeah. It was the dexterity and the actual control of the situations where I, it probably went wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm just disappointed that I didn't actually come away with the goods for you, Darren. And uh, sometimes you feel like you're letting the team down. Oh, no, no, but, not at uh, all. No, you were great, and you were really brave, and I appreciate it. I'll, I'll work something out. That really didn't go as planned. So everything I've arranged for our little team has been for a reason. The stealing chips, the tangling with authorities, the stealing watches. These tasks should have taught them specific skills which they're going to need in order to pull off the art theft. Although having said that, it turns out that stealing a watch takes longer than a, uh, a week to learn, which is a bit of a stumbling block for us. And now that element of the plan is going to need a complete rethink. Hello. 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 Hello, Darren. So, today things get a bit more serious. I'm going to show you exactly what you'll be stealing and start to rehearse you in exactly how you will be stealing it. Right. We've had a replica of the gallery built here to the exact specifications of the real gallery. The exhibition is of the Chapman brothers. Their pieces hang in some of the finest contemporary art galleries across the world and sell for millions. So it's a really special exhibition. Right. The piece you are going to steal is this. This is the piece. It's called One Day You Will No Longer Be Loved. Thoughts? Like? Dislike? Very upsetting picture. It is, isn't it? Really gets you. Yeah, it is quite disturbing. It's one of my yes. favourite pieces of theirs. And it's worth about £100,000. Oh, can we keep it afterwards? No, sadly, we have to give it back. But uh, let me show you how you're going to steal it. Come with me. First things first, this is Ivan, who's putting on the exhibition. He used to be the chairman of the Institute of Contemporary Arts. And this is the gallery. As part of the arrangement with Ivan, I've obtained the plans for the pop-up exhibition. When the temporary gallery gets built next week, it will be to these precise blueprints. The main entrance is here. This is the way in and the only way out. You go up a little ramp into the main gallery space. The security camera is just there, so our target painting is about there. All of this makes sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Every movement of yours will be very carefully choreographed. So you have four very specific jobs. Joe, you are the actor. All right, for a couple of snaps. What's the matter? I'm not doing any harm. Rachel, you are the lifter. Pauline, you are the blocker. You can't stop me. These yeah. are my own personal tools. Maybe just tools. put them back in your pocket. Well, all right, all right, but they I think you're picking on me myself. Cool, lovely. Just something I caught out of my eye there. And Tony, you are the invisible man. You shouldn't be picking on me. You should be doing your jobs. The clear cue for Tony is when I say, gone. It's gone, yeah. We'll just have a look at the ducking thing for you on the screen. Just give it a tiny beat, yeah. all right? So gone, turn. And you also have a couple of members of friends and family here as well. They'll be playing a small but important part. 
The security protocol is that anybody caught trying to steal a painting is taken into this office here. Meanwhile, everybody else is evacuated. Right. Action again. Action again. Let's do it again. OK, we've got a painting missing. Beautifully done. I didn't see a thing. <laughs> So listen, you've done great. We've practiced this for a couple of hours now, and it's looking really good. But now, you're going to do this in front of a real security guard. Oh. You're going to get arrested again. <laughs> well, can we, can we bring him in? That's a copper's walk. Kevin, the guard, knows nothing about what we're planning to do. Hi, Kevin. Hi. Darren, lovely to meet you. Thank Hi. you for coming in. So you're going to be standing in for us for the security guard who'll be in the gallery next week. All I'm going to tell you is what the security guard will know on the day. He's been given this photograph here of somebody who he suspects is going to try and steal a painting. And that the painting, if there is an attempted theft, it's going to be this painting here. All right? That's the information he'll be briefed with. Um, the other thing is there's absolutely no photography allowed in the gallery. Sure. Right. If you can take a seat there, that's that's where your seat will be, if you don't mind. Thank you. Everyone in positions? <clears throat> OK, off you go. This is an identical shot to the one Ivan will be watching on the day, knowing that this is the painting we're going to try and steal. Ah, excuse me, I'm all right for a couple of photos. Personal use, you understand? No, sir. Just a couple? No, sir, it's against gallery policy. Beg your pardon? It's against gallery policy. Oh, really? Right. Thank you. OK, OK. Sir. 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 What's the matter? Uh, it's against gallery <coughs> policy. What's against? Me? Taking photos. What do you mean I'm against gallery policy? No, what am I doing? Calm down, sir. You don't, not I've to got take as, photos. I've got as much entitlement as all the rest of the people in here you with their cameras. You can't take photos in here, look, sir. Look, look, I'm not causing any damage. I'm not causing no trouble. What's the matter with you? I don't see what you're getting on to me about. I think you just don't like my face. That's what I think. Relax, I think you're taking it personal. That's what I think, anyway. Oh, look here now, look. You've made me drop all my tools. Look at state of this. What's the matter? Can, Stay there, sir. Can we just pick them up? Security to a white wing, look, sir. Look, I, t I knew you were picking on me. There's no need Relax, for this sir. whatsoever. Can we just pick Relax, these up? Sir. I need them for my car. I need Stay these for my car. Way, sir. What, what's They're the problem? Weapons, what is the problem? You they... don't like my face. That's what the problem is. That's what I think, anyway. I'll tell you what it is. I'm as good in here as any of the rest of these people. And anyway, what's your occupation? What's your job in here? Security. Security. Security, you say? Well, if you're on security, I suggest you don't bother about me and about that picture in the corner. You bother about that one over there, cos it's gone, the man with the beard, and he's appeared over here, look. Well done. That was, uh, that was great. That was really good. So if this routine worked, Ivan will notice that this painting has disappeared and appeared over here in place of the target painting. It's down to an optical illusion right next to the camera. This is a table with a sign that will say donations welcome in the real gallery. So the camera will So the camera, that, one. that is blocking all of this. A photograph of the wall is attached to the back of the sign. When it's flipped into position, it looks like we're looking at the wall. But actually, everything behind the sign is hidden from the CCTV camera. So at the moment, they can't see you. And now they can. The sign is edge on to the guard, so he won't be able to see it from his post. Step one on the day, flip that illusion into place without Ivan or the guard noticing. But be careful, stand in the wrong place and it's game over because you'll be half in, half out. Then it's step two. Joe, you are the actor. Your job is to be a nuisance and distract the guard's attention, as well as Ivan's watching the CCTV. Yeah. Yeah. Rachel, you are the lifter. Whilst everyone else is looking at Joe, you quietly lift the distraction painting off the far wall and keeping it front onto the security camera, you rest it behind the table. What do you mean I'm against gallery to the people? When Joe draws the guard over to the other side, Pauline, you are the blocker. You shield the painting which Rachel is holding behind your back. Tony, you are the invisible man. Because Ivan won't be able to see you on the CCTV, 
So whilst the guard is looking at Joe, you, Tony, switch painting A, the target, for painting B, handed to you by Rachel. Finally, you remove the optical illusion. Ivan will suddenly notice that painting B has disappeared from the far wall and jumped over to the other wall. That's how we fall Ivan. Meanwhile, the guard is so distracted that Rachel and Pauline, you quietly slip away with the target painting. And that's the plan. Well done. That was, uh, that was great. That was really good. Can we go home now, Mr. Yeah, you can go home oh. now. <laughs> <laughs> Ivan's exhibition is ready and about to open. Welcome to the secret gallery. Ivan, with our help, is presenting this exhibition of the Chapman Brothers' work to raise awareness for the charity Action for Children. So tonight is the opening night of the exhibition. Uh, it's also the night before we try and steal a £100,000 painting right off the wall. So we have security feeds from the cameras inside the gallery so we can see the preparations for the big launch. There are brochures going in, uh, furniture for food and drinks, and the last minute preparations for the catering, which we're providing. And later on, we'll send in our own cameras and film the big party. But first, we need one unexpected delivery to slip past the gallery staff. A table with the optical illusion sign for tomorrow's robbery. Hi, we've come from Action for Children. Rachel must persuade the receptionist that she actually works for the charity. We're from Action for Children. We've got the table to set up. Oh, yes. Did you know? So, may we go in? Gallery security is all about stopping things leaving. I'm banking on them paying less attention to things coming in. Right now, that optical illusion is folded away and hidden. She's done it. Before long, the party is in full swing with invited art lovers and celebrities. There are the Chapman brothers, whose art hangs on the wall. And of course, there's Ivan Massow, who's hosting the party. I genuinely haven't got a clue what he's up to or how this is going to pan out. I just don't know. <laughs> OK, so just to be clear, it's the opening night of the gallery. It's a private viewing. Your names are on the guest list. Have a wander around and just familiarise yourself with the space and remind yourself what you're going to be doing. Above all, you do not know me. All right, are you ready? Yeah. Let's do it. That way, can't miss it. The pensioners are going into the real gallery with real paintings worth hundreds of thousands of pounds. Their task here is to mark the positions where they can safely stand tomorrow. They're using small pieces of sticky tape to mark out the danger zone without arousing suspicion. If they overstep these marks tomorrow, they'll disappear behind the sign on the CCTV shot and the game will be up. They're off before Ivan starts wondering who exactly they are. I'm quite excited. I'm a bit of a fan in a weird way, so I'm quite excited to see if he can put it off. But I just don't know how he's going to do it. Tomorrow is the big day and they'll need to cope with their nerves if they're going to pull off the theft and help me win that one pound wager. I do enjoy performing on stage and I think I have a bit of an ability to turn nerves into excitement, which is a wonderful feeling. They say practice makes perfect and we've really got no excuse for failing. Hopefully, tomorrow we should be in possession of the painting. 
Shame I can't take it home. The money would come in extremely useful. Still a bit anxious, just wondering if the partnership's going to work, where we all have good timing. It's a big thing. We've got to do it right. We've had enough of the um, pretend. This is going to be the real thing, and we're really, really going to do it. It's the day of the robbery. My team of pensioners have had a month's worth of training, and in five hours' time, they'll have just one chance to steal a painting from this man, Ivan Massow, art collector and millionaire. Thanks very much indeed. <laughs> Morning. Very good. How are you? Hello. Good. Good to see you. <laughs> it's exciting. This seems like a good time for me to catch up with him and see how his preparations have got on. Thank you. So it's a big day today. It is. How are you feeling? Are you feeling confident or...? Uh... I feel pretty confident, actually. I, I don't think you can do it. <laughs> OK, fair enough. You've hired in your own private security for this, isn't it? I have, but in the end, I went with my own guy. Um, he's okay. done security for me in the past. He's actually also a big guy. He also works as my personal trainer, but I really right. trust him. Uh, I'd be surprised if you can get past him. All right. Makes it more difficult, but good. And uh, you're going to fill him in on everything you know? Three o'clock. <laughs> Three o'clock, the painting. One day you'll no longer be loved. And, yeah, the, uh, the picture of the guy that's going to do it. Do you want to have another look? Familiarise yeah, yourself yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. I can't say <laughs> Great. <laughs> so, look, we're going to be um, watching the security feed together. Right. We'll see the whole thing play out. <laughs> you got a pound on you in case you lose? Um, I do. Great. <laughs> Good. All right. <laughs> well, um, I'll see you a little bit later. Indeed. See you then. Excellent. <laughs> This is it. The exhibition is open. Our little team is waiting around the corner, waiting for their cues to go in when they have to go into the gallery. Uh, the security guard knows the painting we're going to try and steal and knows when that's going to happen, which is at 3 o'clock. And then between Ivan and our production team and the insurers of the exhibition, we've agreed on a protocol so the paintings go, don't get damaged. So if anything goes wrong, if it all goes wrong, the paintings have to go back on the walls and the security guard will hold whoever he catches in the little uh, security office. And uh, the reception lady will evacuate everybody from the gallery, guard it outside. The whole gallery goes into lockdown. That's, that's if it all goes wrong. So that's it, really. I mean, I've trained them as much as I can. We've rehearsed it as much as we can. And now it's, it's down to them. It's shortly before 3 p.m., the time that I told Ivan my team would steal his painting. Pauline, Rachel and Tony are about to enter the gallery. The security feed shows that Ivan's guard is at his post and the receptionist is watching the front of house and entrance. As soon as they're in, Pauline's husband, Victor, takes position outside. His job is to turn genuine visitors away by claiming there's been a fire alarm inside. Pauline's first crucial task is to distract the guard. Excuse me. Have you ever worked with the security team at uh, Ruskin Galleries? In Giving Japan? Rachel oh, cover to flip the optical illusion into it? place. No. Are you sure? You're not got a brother? Or a cousin? Oh, oh well, sorry. Beautifully done. But you know this kind of thing does happen. Everything looks normal, but the target painting is now hidden from Ivan. Completely different. Oh, sorry about that. So we're going to watch from in here. Do you want to put yourself? Can I give you that? Thank you. Do you want to take Thanks that? Thanks very much. And sit yourself down. OK. <laughs> and that's the security. There's your security guard. So as you know, Ivan, this is obviously the main gallery space. So this is the painting. 
there. Uh, this is the door. It's the only door in and out. And uh, this is the little temporary security office. Uh, <sighs> I get my picture out. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> See if I can recognise any of these people. Uh, I think we're a little way off here. <laughs> he must be getting nervous. <laughs> Poor lamb. With just moments to go, here comes Joe, along with some friends and family helpers. Yes. Now, don't walk there, Pauline. <laughs> this is so funny. So you shouldn't have seen the flat thing. We were hoping that you wouldn't have spotted that, but that's, that's OK. We've blown it with Ivan. Maybe the pensioners can still get away with the painting if they fool the guard. It's staring right at it, so I can't... I just... It's... it's dangerously close. Dangerously close. Sam. All right, for a couple of photos. Sorry, you can't take pictures. No pictures. No pictures. All right. OK. What do you mean? Pictures. What did you say? I said no pictures. Is, is this your no, rule or the manager's? It's the manager's rule. I've never had this treatment before when I've well, been when I've been in an art gallery. I don't know what's going on. Sorry. What are you playing at? Sorry, that's the way I've it is. got rights, you know. Listen, you can't take pictures. End of. No argument. Why is that? What's the problem? That's the what is the problem? That's the <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's only a joke. <laughs> Just don't look at it in the light. So it's only a joke. Stay, stay, stay. It's only a joke. It's only a joke. I'm trying to look at it in the light. What went on? I'm trying to look at it in the light. It's totally, it's only a joke. It's only a joke. Look, it's only a joke. We're only trying to, I'm trying to look at it in the light. I care what you It's only a joke. What are you doing, mate? I'm just trying to look at the picture in the light. It's only a joke. Fantastic. So. We've got our way here now. Sit down, boys. Make yourselves comfortable. Sit down. The security protocol has kicked in. Sit down. The guard has his instructions to detain any suspects in the office and make sure the paintings go back on the wall. Meanwhile, the gallery is being evacuated. Right. That didn't work. What's he got in his hand? He's got the painting. He's not insured to carry that around. Can someone read the card, please, right now? Thank you. OK, Darren. Yeah? We need to have a chat. Yeah. yeah. Right. Sorry, one second. Oh. I probably owe you a pound. There you go. Ivan, just looking at me, mate. I'm sorry. Can I get your instant reactions? How do you feel about that? Well, I'm disappointed. I wanted him to do it. I didn't really want to win this pound. <laughs> the, um, I'm such a fan of Darren. Talk me through um, what's going on with Darren. It's obviously fallen apart. It's obviously lost it. Um... What seems to have happened is that it looks like, and from what I can see, the oh, guy's even caught him. It back on. So, um, so he's uh, <laughs> and he's caught, apprehended the the felons, but but. I'm sorry. Have you got a close up there? Yeah. Happy? Yeah, just okay. Can I just check? Just say one to ten for me again. One, two, three, Sam, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sam, can you just go and just check the personal here a second? Nine, ten. I'm just getting a little bit of a rustle. Yeah, okay. That's better, okay. So, okay. 
Okay, backup questions. Here we go. Ivan, just tell me about exactly your reaction to winning the bet against Derek. Winning my pound. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm disappointed to have won because uh, Darren's put in a lot of effort, so um, um, I still can't quite believe it. Does Darren ever lose? I can't believe it. There must be a twist. Well, I wish there was. <laughs> um, can I have now a super close-up, please, of Ivan? And um, so what are you, you going to do with that pound? Well, um, I thought I might buy some chewing gum, maybe, but then I'd at least 40p left, so... <sighs> Probably give it to charity, yeah. I, do, I, I think, uh... So, it is, uh, now... What do you make the exact time? Seven minutes past. Is that the correct time? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You set your own watch? I did set my own watch. You haven't taken it off today? I haven't taken it off except for insecurity. <laughs> How are you? Hello. Uh, any keys, coins, mobile phones, watches, bracelets? I did think I saw someone through, but it can't be. It is seven minutes past three. Right. So, if that guy at security was one of us, and wasn't a real security guard, and your watch was put forward, then the real time would be... What's the real time, John? It's 3.01. Please. It's 3.01. So we're actually a bit fast. So if it is 3.01, then that's only really one minute after 3 o'clock, which is the time I said the painting would be stolen. Oh, no. <laughs> the gallery is locked now. It's locked outside. It's been guarded from the front by the front of house girl. You'll know that you know the security protocol. There's your security guard is in this room with our two perpetrators, including the guy uh, you recognise from the photograph. And the painting is gone. Right. You might want to head round to the gallery to try and work this one out. I can't believe I'm going to lose my pound. <laughs> So right now, the receptionist is guarding the locked front door, having evacuated all visitors. Except Tony and Joe, who are being held by the guard in the back office. Dan? So where's the picture? Oh, it's not. Well, I put it back on the wall. <laughs> it's not on the wall, Dan. Uh, yeah, but I put it back on the wall. <laughs> Whether it's not there now, I put it back on. I was instructed to come back in here, so I did it. That was it. Well, it's just, come around and look. Hundred thousand pound painting. Absolutely. <laughs> nice. Well, it's got a beer somewhere, hasn't it? The security guard has done his job and followed instructions perfectly. You're free to go. <laughs> Ivan has no choice but to let them go. So Ivan knows the painting is gone, but he's got no idea where it is or how it left the gallery. I think he needs a bit of help with this. Your painting is at 53 Leather Lane. I don't even know where Leather Lane is. Darren's in the car around the corner, waiting for you. Right. OK. So what happened in the gallery? Yeah, the picture's gone. How? I don't know, and it's all over in Leather Lane. I kind of knew you'd get away with it. <laughs> I mean, why? <laughs> I 
helped you. Ivan is something of a philanthropist, so I'm sure he'll approve of where he's going. Oh my god! <laughs> That's amazing! <laughs> so I go and buy it. <laughs> I've come to buy the picture in the window. The painting right at the front. It's so weird. I happen to have a pound. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how much this is worth? No, I'm not sorry. <laughs> I'm going to pay you before I tell you. Thank you. It's worth about 100,000. Really? Well, exactly 100,000. <laughs> oh, it just have interest. Is this the guy who bought it in? It is actually, yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to keep that as a souvenir. Yeah. <laughs> Careful. Thank you. Very much. Ivan. Well, thank you. Thank you, you so much. You've been fantastic. Oh, it's been a pleasure. You'll have to watch the show to work out how it was done. Even how you got it over here. I'll let you think about it. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> I just don't know what happened, to be honest with you. Well, I just looked back at the screen and I saw it, it was gone pretty much immediately, I reckon. Uh, but it must have been so fast because as I got to Dan, the, the, uh, the security guard, he said, I've just hung it up. You know, so in that little gap, it went missing. The doors were locked. I can't see where they'd have hidden. And in fact, uh, it was making its way all the way over here, which is pretty incredible. That's it. I think my team deserves a glass of champagne to celebrate. Of course, there's one or two things I didn't tell you. Hi, Joe. Hello there. I remember when Darren came to meet me. I'm my twin brother, Tom. Oh, it was fantastic, was not it? <laughs> you, Tom, will have probably the most important role in the whole thing. You'll steal it and get blamed. <laughs> We're not completely identical, but when people see us for the first time, they do have to do a double take. Whilst the other four were learning the skills they needed for the robbery, Tom the twin was getting ready too. He even had a go at stealing chips. Are we here somewhere? It was absolutely insane, was that? So Tom's first big moment was early in the day during the shift of the morning guard. He'd gone into the gallery and was waiting for a distraction that I'd arranged, an actor playing a drunk. As soon as that guard's back was turned, Tom slipped under the table. Can I see that? No, you can't. The same table which was brought in by us as part of our catering team, as you'll remember. When Dan, Ivan's main guard, came on shift, Tom was already under there. Sorry, sorry. The guard caught my team red-handed just as we'd hoped. Next Wednesday. I want you to get caught. Oh, that works. Darren is just a cheeky man. And at exactly 3 p.m., Tom came out to steal the painting. That wheelchair had been brought in with the charity table the day before. It had a pocket with the perfect dimensions to hide the painting. There must be a twist. Pat, pat, banging on the door. Can you let me out? I was in there with that <laughs> Sorry. The receptionist was horrified to have locked in an old man in a wheelchair. In fact, there'll be a member of your staff who'll help us leave with the painting. <laughs> And all the time, Ivan thought Joe, being held by the guard, was the thief in the photo. 
but it was Twin Tom all along. And that, believe it or not, is how we're going to steal the painting. One day, hopefully, each of us will be elderly. By then, we will have learned things about life and ourselves, about what's important and what we really want, things we might be decades away from knowing now. We might like our future selves to be respected and treated with the dignity they deserve, and doing that might be one of the clearest celebrations of humanity we know. Being part of this convinced me that moving back to Bolton was what I needed to do. Found a few of my friends, and I will track the rest down eventually, and uh, I'm much happier. This whole experience has been uplifting, fantastic, something I never, ever dreamt that I would ever do. I never thought at my time of life I'd be part of anything like this. It's been truly amazing. Yes, all my family, friends and relations were saying, oh, what have you let yourself in for? Really, Mum, you shouldn't be doing this. And I'm very glad I did. What's been happening to me is that all these watches appearing, um, and I've been taking them off lady friends and gentlemen, and I, I, I really don't know if there's an answer to this, but I've got to stop it. I'm just surrounded with watches, and everybody at pubs got none. It's... <laughs> so that's it. They stole the painting, we won the wager. Thank you for watching. This is, oh no, that's not it, is it? That's not quite it, because there's still the other painting. Because that special table was really special. It wasn't just a place for Tom to hide under, and it wasn't just cover for Rachel to move the painting of the bearded man. It was also a place for Tom to switch that real painting for a fake that was hidden underneath. It was the fake painting that Rachel put back on the wall after they got caught. Because the real painting went into a secret compartment where it stayed for the rest of the exhibition until it was carried out again by the removers. So we didn't only steal this painting, we also stole this one. And that really is it. This is Gresham Street in the city of London. That's the Bank of England there behind us. This is a fake security van. And these are security boxes containing real money. Each box contains 50,000 pounds. This is Mark. Mark is our fake security guard. And uh, Mark is a stunt actor, but he has been briefed to act and behave exactly as a real security guard would. This whole area is being protected and surrounded by the police. They are surrounding here uh, from a radius of about 200 yards. Their job is to keep the public away and to intervene if anything gets out of hand. So this is the venue, this is the set for the challenge that I've set myself and have been working on secretly for the last couple of weeks, which is this. Under the guise of a motivational seminar in which I teach my skills to a group of middle management businessmen and women, can I get any of them to steal 100,000 pounds in what they believe is a genuine armed robbery? That's the show. This is the heist. History is littered with examples of normal people being persuaded to act in deviant, criminal or irrational ways. How do you persuade someone to do something they would not normally be prepared to do? Some people might think of hypnosis. However, hypnosis isn't really what it appears to be. It's only a kind of play acting. And no one would carry out an instruction to really commit a robbery any more than they'd murder someone if they were told to. So my real task is to insidiously massage certain ideas and mental states into these people without ever mentioning a robbery so that hopefully, when the time comes, they will just spontaneously, of their own free will, just decide to do it. And that journey starts at a rather comfortable hotel in Hertfordshire. Thirteen delegates were invited to an intimate seminar to apparently learn some of my skills. They were amongst the first to answer ads placed in the press, 
and also to fulfill certain criteria. They had to be open, responsive types, who I felt would respond reasonably to my techniques, have no criminal record, and fall into a typical middle management income bracket or above. They also had to be deemed psychologically robust enough by an independent psychologist to take part in the show. And at the end of the show, the opportunity to commit the robbery will be offered separately and individually to just four of the delegates. So I have to decide which four will be the most likely to take the bait. I have done motivational um, seminars before in the past. I've delivered them myself and been to them. I hope that I'll be able to pick up something from being in close proximity to someone who's so uh, talented. I'm intrigued by him. I'm very intrigued as to how he does what he does. The way he manages to influence people and use uh, the power of suggestion to get people to do what he wants would be very useful in my job, absolutely, yeah. They've arrived the evening before the seminar to have time to relax and have dinner. They are aware that everything is being filmed, but they're unaware that I'm also present, watching from an upstairs room to see how they interact. To kick off the process of getting to know them and to amplify their behaviours a little, I introduce a couple of elements to see how they react to authority. Firstly, an actor playing an irritating security guard hassles them on their way into dinner. The antagonism that some of these people will feel towards this security guard, dressed in green, will become an important part of the jigsaw puzzle right at the end of the journey. Enjoy. Cheers. 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 To us. <laughs> you can pull a stroke on Darren Brown. It has to be done. Did you see when Darren did the zombie shoot him up? Yes. Yeah. I thought that's probably about as, about as extreme as I'd like it to get. As they enjoy their lavish meal and start to really relax, they're unaware that another actor, playing the maitre d', will present them with an unexpected bill after dinner and drinks. I want to see how they react, who complies, who gets angry, and who emerges as the alpha male or female of the group and takes charge. Sorry, I don't think people have got their cards with them or a means of payment. If it's, if it's in your room, would it be possible to get it? Because we'd prefer to settle this tonight. What's this? For the meal, the bills. The bills? I'm sorry, a few people don't seem to have not been aware of the fact that the accommodation, is, the accommodation is paid for. I'm still, still hungry. hungry. <laughs> Personally, I'm still hungry. Where's the crisps? I'm, I'm very sorry, but I, you should have said at the time, though, you have to pay for what you've consumed. I'm sorry. Hello, have you got your payment ready, sir? Have I got my payment ready? Yeah, send it to my accountant. Yeah, no. have, you, have, you, have you got your card in your bedroom, or have you, have you got... No, send it to my accountant. Get my well, I'd love you to get your card. That, that would be a lot easier. It's a bit embarrassing. I understand it's a bit of a surprise to some of you. If you can sort it all out... Young man, there you go. Put it all on that. Right, OK. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Cheers, Paul. Cheers, Paul. Cheers, Paul. Cheers, Paul. <laughs> Our 13 businessmen and women have been told little about the show other than they will be taking part in a seminar to learn my skills, and that there will be follow-up filming for some of them. I'm going to teach them some genuine skills that I use, peppered with some spurious pop psychology, and quite a lot of bullshit. Very green, is that? What does green do to you? My real aim is to start to focus them unconsciously on the idea of stealing, while convincing them that they're learning real skills to keep them responsive and hungry. Morning. Morning. Hello. Uh, welcome to the seminar, and this is a first for me, so I hope you all uh, get a lot out of it. Should be fun. OK, so, mind mastery. Let's have a look at what we're going to learn, take away with us today. My task over the next two weeks is to see if I can influence a group of middle management businessmen and women to steal £100,000 in an armed robbery. The process begins with a motivational seminar. I have five hours to plant the seeds that will lead to the heist. Along the way, there are various levels at which I'm working. Make yourself feel confident about something simply by... By playing to their natural suggestibility, I encourage them to believe that hypnosis is a real tool which I'm using to cement their new skills. Their belief that I might be secretly hypnotising them makes them feel that they are learning more, which is a trick employed by many speakers in this industry. Can you feel it? On one level, I'm teaching them useful skills. They'll go away with a basic understanding of how to read people's unconscious cues. You can tell from the movement of the eyes whether or not somebody is making an image in the head of something that's happened, they're remembering an image, or whether they're making something up. What's your mother's maiden name? Edwards. Thank you. Little look up there and to the right. 
don't believe a word of it, I'll ask you to go and sit back down again. But thank you. I'm saying it's this hand here. However, uh, face the front for me and just open the hand that contains the coin, show them the coin on the palm of your hand. Good. Uh, do that. Two minutes. Uh, it helps if you stand up as well. That one's lower down. You move the person around, but... Uh... And you just... And now you're deliberately forcing yourself to look there. You look there <laughs> first time, so it's got to be that one. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I took my friend down for, for a meal out. I was doing the, the coin in the hand trick and I managed to get, I think it was nine or ten times in a row and I wouldn't tell her how it was done and it, <laughs> she was so utterly vexed by it, it was great. <laughs> also, I show them how to use certain language patterns to change people's behaviour and confuse aggressors on the street. But the wall outside my house isn't four foot high and of course, if someone says that to you, your reaction is to just... Wool. <laughs> wool. Wool. I also show them powerful memory techniques. In one exercise, I have them call out 20 words at random. Carousel, spanner. Motorbike. OK. Somebody give me a number between 1 and 20? 4. 4 is a cloud. 15. 15. Uh, carousel. 19. 19. Radio. 9. 9. Um, gold. <laughs> <laughs> OK, ten minutes from now, you better do it in the speed it took to write them down. The, the, the linking method was so quick to learn, and it is such an amazing thing, and I'm going to teach all my friends how to do it. It is quite impressive that, you know, um, basically learn the, the, the technique in the seminar, and now it's like sort of a week later. I can still remember them now, and that's something that I could never have done. Stand up. You go through the list from the top. Doll takes you to wool. wool. Very good. Owl. What does wool now take you to? Owl. Owl. Very good. Owl. Cloud. Owl. Cloud. Toaster. Toaster. Avocado. Avocado then takes you to escalator. Escalator. Uh, joist. Goal. Pyramid. Portrait. Uh, purse. Goal. Pyramid. Portrait. Purse. Biscuit. Uh, snow. Fifteen was carousel. Sixteen was laptop. Laptop. Steak. Steak. <laughs> spanner. spanner. Steak, spanner, radio and motorbike. Radio, motorbike. Excellent. <laughs> Is that right? Excellent. <laughs> and after radio comes motorbike. motorbike, give yourselves a round of applause. Well done. <laughs> Four things. Knowledge, attitude, skills and habits. Now, on a second level, I'm using metaphorical language to implant important pieces of the jigsaw puzzle connected with stealing and a romanticised view of criminality throughout the seminar. People's guard, those things that seem very kind of intimidating and, and impenetrable that people put up, it takes nothing. It can be effortless just to move those guards out the way and take this sort of lorry load of kind of opportunities and skills and, and strategies that they have uh, to use. Right, right, let's go past that. Anchoring. Haha, <laughs> that's great. Anchoring is stealing an emotion, stealing a response. Importantly, and on a third level, I introduce the idea of triggering emotional states. This will be of central importance to the persuasion process. I tell them to remember times when they felt highly motivated and then to amplify the feeling. Can you feel it? It amplifies as it goes around. Each time that it goes around, it boosts you, and you get the feeling more and more. I then attach it to the trigger of rubbing their legs. Hold that feeling as you rub your leg. Keep the feeling there getting stronger and stronger. After a few repetitions, they can create the motivated state on command just by rubbing. And the more they do it, the stronger the association becomes. All adverts do this. It's classic stuff. It's show you sexy, sexy people, make those images bigger, brighter, closer, bring you into it, that sort of thing. Elicit the emotion that we'd like you to attach to this product. Got that, feeling that, great. And there's the product name. And then it goes away. That's an anchor. You're going to give you a gift. These will be of use later on, don't worry about them now, but uh, these will represent something important to you, so thank you very much. I give them a realistic toy gun each to apparently symbolise their new role as thought criminals. Four of the subjects will need these guns in a couple of weeks. I also give them a CD each, which I say contains subliminal messages they must listen to every day. Their belief that I can influence them without them being aware of it is vital to the process. The CDs are, in fact, blank. They're all... Pretty similar, but... Uh, Can you load uh, it on your iPod? Yes. Uh, uh, oh. Yes. Yes, absolutely. You can put it on your iPod. Uh, what I want to do now with you is just a, uh, a consolidation kind of exercise uh, before you go. 
In the style of such seminars, we finish with a group visualization. Here, I shift the focus of the seminar towards motivation and an attitude of just do it and reiterate the language of criminality. When a toddler just sees something, wants it and goes and gets it, nothing kind of stands in its way. There's just that sense of just do it, just get it. And it's like a green light that just says go. Just do it. I also transfer the rubbing leg trigger across to a piece of music. Bring the feeling back. Keep it going. Whenever you hear that music in your head, you can just go for it. So they practice that a few times, and then I know that just by playing that piece of music, Can You Feel It by the Jackson 5, that it will trigger a very motivational state in them. And then much of the process to come will have to do with manipulating that association for my real agenda. But for now, the piece of music and the colour green and that do it phrase are all very powerful triggers for them. What I'd like you to do after we've done this and we've finished here, you're going to go off and there's a sort of a pub a little way down, you're going to go off and have a drink. There is a sweet shop just over the road. I want you to go steal a couple of sweets, bring them back to the pub to just reclaim that very childlike attitude which is at the heart of this. That's what I want you to do. Okay. It was fantastic. That's what I thought about the, the, the whole day was great. It was brilliantly organised and it was wonderfully well presented. Definitely in myself, I feel a lot more positive um, as I'm going about just like everyday stuff and especially at work. I really like my toy gun. It's brilliant. I get to run around my flat making bang bang noises. It's like being 10 again. It's really, really good. It, there's a bit of a puzzle with it all. I mean, it is a bit funny. It's not going to make prime time TV watching a crowd of us learn a few of his simpler tricks and, and techniques. I have to get them to cross the line into deviant and criminal behaviour, but in a way which can be framed to sound fun and harmless. Purely because an authority figure has told them to, will they make the decision to walk into the shop, steal goods, and frame it as a positive experience for themselves? I'm watching the action through hidden cameras installed in the newsagents across the road. The shop owner is aware that we're filming, but the assistants know nothing. I wasn't thinking it was going to be a real shop. When I got in there, I realised that it wasn't as easy as I thought it'd be. All, all the staff were standing right by the suites. We were being asked to do something that was actually against the law. They don't know that this is being filmed for the show, but they are aware that they may be caught on the shop security cameras and that what they're doing is illegal. My initial reaction when I came back into the pub was actually euphoria. It was like the woman had won Got Six Numbers on the lottery. She was so hyper and high about it and proud of herself. I think that's something that I hope will actually stay with me because I think I could probably do with the taking a few more risks in life. <laughs> I felt really good, actually. It's bad to say. I felt... And I know, obviously, stealing's wrong. And uh, that's what I want to say on camera. Stealing is wrong. I have a, a young daughter, a teenage daughter. Um, there is no way I am going to show, even for fun, even for a laugh, that shoplifting should be done or condoned. Darren explained that, that would be taking us back to our inner child. And by taking me back to my inner child, I had the opposite effect and remember the sort of, like, it put the fear of God in me really um, in terms of the repercussions so there's no way I was going to steal anything from that shop. I didn't feel guilty which, which normally I'd have thought I would have done 
but but no, not at all. Which was I'm not sure if that reflects anything on my character. One of the things I remember that Darren said was, if you do something with enough confidence, it will work. Which clearly does for him, but it didn't for me. I just wanted to have a hand this. Oh, you can't, no. So you're not in a position to give it away. <laughs> oh. Do not leave this side, please. Why would a guy come in and ask to have a packet of fucking organ? Why would a guy steal a Twix bar? Why would a guy come in, look at sellotape, fucking Angel Delight, a newspaper, wine, and then just buy a paper? Yes? Pardon? Do you want to put those jammy dodges back, please? Yes. Sorry, the ones that are just in there. Thanks very much. See you later. Sorry. I must have forgotten about those. Yeah, well, my ball isn't full, but my ball isn't full, but I. Good one. My ball isn't full, but I. These doors are probably 13 times. It's a bit of a shut up. You're shooting Joey. That's the fourth one tonight, that is. No. Yeah. Is it They're good? all in suits as well. There's something going on. That's why I asked him. I said, Who comes in? Is there a crowd of them? Ryan. Call it him. What if we just ban people in Simpsons? Like? I'm going to get really fucked up to him. I felt it's a bit of a failure, actually, because <laughs> I hadn't done it. So out of the 13 people that attended the seminar, I've decided to eliminate four of them. Uh, Paul, first of all, because he was a little too controlling, had also mentioned that he had a daughter and he didn't want his daughter seeing him do anything criminal on TV, which I thought was fair enough. Uh, Pam and Helen, I didn't feel were suitable to take through the highest experience, really, and uh, Sula as well. Sula had uh, admitted to filling out the wrong job on her application form. She isn't really an accountant, and her real job doesn't fall within the criteria of the show. So those are eliminated, but all the people that do get eliminated will take with them a very powerful motivational state which they can tap into, as well as certain genuine skills which they've learnt, learnt from me at the seminar. So those are gone, but there are nine people left. He's in a lot of pain. Welcome back. Uh, there are nine subjects left. I can only use four for the heist. So a week after the seminar, I arranged to test the limits of their responsiveness to authority. So a week ago, I arranged for them to take part in what they now think is a, a piece of unfilmed academic research at a university and nothing to do with the show, uh, supposedly looking into the effects of punishment on learning. And they believe now that this is part of their growth process. In fact, it was a reenactment of a powerful experiment conducted by Stanley Milgram in 1963 to look at how normal people can commit atrocious acts simply because they're following orders. Milgram's parents were Jewish refugees in World War II, and his pioneering work speaks volumes about the nature of responsibility. It's being filmed with covert cameras. Thank you. It's Hello. Coming. They're introduced to an actor pretending to be another participant. You didn't come from the same room. No, no. no. Yeah, no. you don't know each other. No, no. But we don't actually know how punishment affects learning. After a brief so introduction, our subjects are tricked into thinking they've chosen their role as teachers in the experiment. And if you could just tell me what your positions are. Learner. Learner and teacher. Learner. <laughs> our subjects observe the learner being instructed by the scientist who is just another actor. This electrode is connected to a generator in a second room. We right. might be going with the teacher. OK. Just make sure that we have a good contact with the skin and so it doesn't cause any blistering or burning. Is that comfortable? That's OK, yeah. Yeah, and we just place these straps around your arms yeah. just to avoid, avoid any excess movement. Those aren't too tight. No, that's OK. No. And the teacher we will read out some word pairs to you. Blue girl... The learner is told he's going to be asked a series of memory questions by the teacher. 
He will have to remember word pairs and then correctly remember them when offered multiple choices. If the answer is incorrect, you will receive an electric shock. The teacher is then taken next door and shown the generator, which ranges from 15 volts all the way up to a lethal 450 volts. The domestic electricity supply in the UK is, of course, 240 volts. Our teachers are given the list of questions and told to increase the voltage each time the learner gets a question wrong. They are then given an example of a low voltage shock. And try and estimate in volts the amount of shock you feel you're getting. OK. Jesus. Oh, shit. <laughs> Do you know how much that was? Enough. 75. It was actually 45. Just oh, my God. Teacher, begin. Shoe, horn, steam. The clean. point of this test is to see whether the teachers, our subjects, will call a stop to the experiment or continue to the point where they are administering seemingly lethal electric shocks to the victim simply because the scientist is telling them to. That's correct. The next word is bicycle. The options, tyre, race, helmet, shorts. That's incorrect, so there'll be 120 volts. I don't think I want to do this anymore. If you could continue, please, teacher. <coughs> there is... No, I don't think I'm going to do it anymore. <laughs> well, the experiment requires you to continue. Yeah, even so, I don't think I'm going to do it anymore. Correct. Mish. Captain. According to plan, our accomplice provided many wrong answers. Each protest was coordinated to a particular shock voltage on the generator and his responses were played via a CD. That's wrong, 150 volts. The correct, the correct answer is Captain Shu. <coughs> Cup. That's wrong. 225 volts. Take it off! I've had enough of this! <laughs> he's in a lot of pain. Continue, please. But he's he's not he's not comfortable. We must continue to the end of the experiment. Well, the learner likes it a lot, he has to go on until he's learnt the words correctly. OK. Forest. That's wrong, 240 volts. Are you sure this is not causing any lasting damage? He sounds in, like he's in a lot of pain. Well, the shocks might be painful, they're not harmful. What, what does that mean, though, they're not harmful? Sorry, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting you. When you say that they're, they're, they might be painful but not harmful... They cause no long-term damage. OK, so what does that mean? It doesn't leave any scars? It causes no damage. That seems very, that seems very cold and calculated to me. This doesn't seem like a very... Anyway... <laughs> Golden. That's wrong, mate. 300 volts. Ow! That's enough! I refuse to answer anymore! Just let me out! Staple. The options are diet, jar, balcony, and bowl. The learner doesn't answer in a reasonable time, say four to five seconds, and you have to treat the answer as wrong and follow that procedure. Did you hear that, learner? Just any response, mate, come on. Wild guess. Please continue. 345 volts, if you're still with me, I'm sorry.
I can't do this, honestly. Can we stop this experiment? Because I can't do this. this I, if you don't I, continue, we'll have to discontinue the experiment. <clears throat> yeah, OK, fine. That's fine. I'm not going to do this. Incorrect. 405 volts. Um, sorry, I don't know, does someone want to check on him or something? It's just he's not making any noise now, and he was before, and... Well, I'm quite happy to go on, but I'm just a well, bit worried about... If you would continue. Yeah, I'm just a bit worried, because he was... Like, he, he was, like, complaining before about the... But no harm, no harm will come to him. But he's, he's not making any noise now. It's essential that we continue with the experiment. Balcony. Incorrect. 450 volts. You promise he's not. It, it, it won't. Please continue with the procedure. Like, you say it hurts, but it's because it's like <laughs> it says they're dangerous in a shot. It'll be all right, yeah? Please continue. OK, I think we'll discontinue the experiment there. All of the subjects were told the true nature of the experiment was to see how they would respond to authority and that it would eventually form part of this show. He is OK. I can tell you, he's absolutely fine. You actually weren't administering electric shocks to him at all. In the original Milgram experiment, psychologists were asked to predict how many people would continue to the point that they were administering the highest shock on the board. Their prediction was one-tenth of one percent. They were wrong. The results of our experiment were almost identical to the original. Over 50 percent of participants continued up to 450 volts. The majority of people will administer lethal electric shocks just because a guy in a white coat is telling them to. 450 volts. 450 volts. 450 volts. 450. So after the results of the Milgram experiment, I've now chosen my four subjects that will go forward for the heist. Phil was impressively resourceful when he was caught stealing sweets and held in his anguish during the Milgram experiment rather than defy the scientist. I did want to include a woman in the group. Jen was the only subject to take a long time to recover after the Milgram experiment, so I felt I shouldn't use her. Veronica didn't steal from the shop, so that left Vicky. Of all the subjects, she was the only one to have known the original Milgram experiment and call a halt to her involvement in it. Can I just say, I can't do this because I've heard of this experiment before. So I think she'll be quite interesting to use, although I, I don't know if she'll actually take the bait or not. Ali stole most from the shop, seems to be highly responsive, most outgoing, and seemed most happy to continue the experiment until he was stopped. Well, shouldn't it have made more notches on the thing? I'm sorry. Danny stopped the experiment, but in such an outspoken way that I suspected he would have real strength of character to bring out. It's not even reacting anymore. So this now brings them all up to yesterday afternoon and there are a couple more pieces of the jigsaw puzzle I need to put into place. The motivated state in itself isn't quite enough, so I need to turn it a little more aggressive for them but without ringing any alarm bells. So I have them create a feeling of aggression and attach it to the trigger of a squeezed fist. You take hold of it in that hand and you anchor it to that feeling of that hand just there squeezing as you take all that aggression. As you move that around and around inside of you, as it doubles and triples and moves around inside of you, building up that feeling of... Then I have them trigger off the motivated state by rubbing the leg at the same time to combine both states together. You are linking these powerfully and extricably together. Good. And just... They try this a couple of times and are now able to tap into a darker state and they still feel this is entirely for their benefit. This is your most powerful state that you as a human being can achieve. That's what it does. That's what the music does. That's what the words do. That's what the, that green intensity does. All of those things that are triggering this off, that's what you get. 
How was that? Mental. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Before the heist itself, one last piece of the puzzle. They need to believe they have it within them to overpower a security guard and to know what to say and how to say it without thinking about it. So without ever mentioning security guards, I teach them an esoteric martial arts exercise where a person can be pushed over using the power of chi. You two are going to find yourself being pushed over, uh, knocked backwards, being forced off your feet. This will serve as a powerful experience for them, a resource for them to draw from tomorrow when they come across our security guard in the city. Uh, Victoria and Phil, Vicky and Phil, what you're going to do is, when I tell you to, you're going to start to create that state inside of yourself, and you build it to a peak. When you reach that peak, the only instruction I want you to give are just the words down on the floor. Just those words alone, they're going to carry the full weight of, of that emotional state that's behind it. Okay, just do it now, just get into that state. Just start to build that up inside of you now. When you feel it peak, just say those words down on the floor now, that's all you say, and you keep it focused and you push, and you push those two back. Down in alley, try not to let it push you over. Keep pushing back against it. Just pushing. Down on the floor. Now, of course, it's not chi or energy at all. In reality, the person expecting to fall over succumbs to the suggestion and topples off balance. But the people apparently pushing come to believe that they have a powerful and invincible state to tap into. Down on the floor. That's what I want them to believe. I felt very tense. It was almost as if I could physically push him without actually touching him. Saying uh, down on the floor was like passing the energy across. Um, like, a, like throwing it, throwing something at them. What I felt was just this sort of invisible energy, just, it, you know, it was a really, it sort of just, it just sort of crashed against my chest. You followed every aspect of the persuasion process from the last couple of weeks. A certain phrase, a certain colour, a certain piece of music have been used to induce a state of wanton recklessness and aggression and a just do it attitude. Other factors also support the process. The titles on the screen and the language used at the seminar. The supposedly subliminal CDs which left them feeling malleable. The toy plastic gun which romanticizes the idea of a criminal. The green security van. The animosity felt towards a security man in a green uniform already who happened to be wearing the same badge as our guard in the street. Finally, the oil painting of a security van hidden on the wall at the seminar. Everything should now be in place. So if you missed the start of the show, this is Gresham Street in the City of London. The Bank of England is just down there. We have a fake security van, a fake security guard, and £100,000 of real money. There are 15 cameras watching this area. We have no idea what's going to happen or if anything's going to happen, but we just hope to cover it as best as we can. You have followed every aspect of the persuasion process uh, so far. Nothing has been added or taken away. It is the linking of certain emotional states uh, to certain triggers, piece of music, uh, colour, certain words and so on. Our participants have no idea that they're going to be filmed or that anything has been set up and we don't know what they're going to do. This is nothing we've been able to rehearse and if it doesn't work, we will just show it to you not working four times in a row. There's really no way of knowing. This whole area has been cordoned off from the public and is being supervised by the police. Our four subjects have been told to expect a phone call and that they'll have to travel into the City of London for a final motivational session. Hey, how are you doing? It's Darren. Hello. Uh, just about to pick you up. There's a car just around the corner that's going to come and get you, so if you can uh, grab your stuff and I will see you in a bit. I think the car's going to drop you just down the road, so you've got to walk up the last bit by yourself. As with every day, you know, as I say time and time again, this is about every day finding some opportunity to experience something that makes you feel great 
and exhilarated, yeah? So you know, make that decision to steal yourself and grab the opportunity to make all this work really, really pay off. It's just about standing in the face of security in life, isn't it, and making it do what you want it to do. Because ultimately, I suppose all of this is about you knowing that you're the one with the weapon of absolute, pointed, aggressive, unquestioning power. They're also told to bring with them their toy guns that they were given at the seminar. All of our cameras and crew are well hidden. None can be seen by our four subjects. Targets in zone one. All cameras locked in position. Stand by car. Now remember that two weeks ago, Victoria was an ordinary businesswoman, a press officer at a motivational seminar. Go trigger music in the car. Time, Mark. Take your time. Time, Can you wait? Now, help me out. I think she got on the floor. Don't she? Don't she? On the floor. Stand by car. Go car. Cue music. This is a hold up. Get down on the floor. Get down on the floor. On your front, on your front. Move down, car. On your front. Okay, don't move. Hands on your head. Don't move. Get away. Get off. Get off. It's okay, Phil. It's Darren. Okay. Right? <laughs> what happened? Why did you do that? I saw the guy coming out of the thing. I don't know. It was like just before. I don't know. It was just something coming out. It was just like a split sending light. When I'm playing rugby, if I've got an important match or something. Yeah. Um, it's like a hundred times better. Come with me. Come with me. Okay. Getting out the car now, getting out the car now. Target is in sight. Target is in zone one. And cue car. <laughs> Excuse 
Excuse me, mate. Put down the, put down, put down, get down on the floor. Down on the floor. Down on the you floor. Ain't do it. On your, on your front, right on your front. On your front, right over, right over. Stop looking at me. Right over, stop looking. Face front, look forward. Look forward, look forward. Tell you what, mate, you try anything and you're dead, all right? Morning. Look forward, mate, or I'll fucking put it in your head. Look forward, look forward. Mate, if you move, I swear to God, you're dead, mate. If you've got family, Danny. Just a second. All right. Okay, take a moment. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 you bastard, <laughs> Okay, come with me. I'm gonna make sure you're okay. All right? Yeah, okay. come with me. Stealing sweets is one thing, but stealing boxes of money from the Bank of England is a completely different kettle of fish. I'm a good person. <laughs> I'm a good person. You good? <laughs> no, I'm just Are you? Hi, would you put yourself up on that bed there for me, please? OK. Close your eyes for me. As you start to undo the aggression, or as you start to undo those aspects of it that would have led you to hold up a security man, all that goes now. You now have something very powerful to draw from. Something that you can think back to with the necessary distance to just take from it everything that's good. It's been the most fun I've had in ages. It's been brilliant. I've taken away a sense of power, a sense of achievement, a sense that anything is possible, really. It's a really amazing experience, something that I can kind of look back on and think about how I was able to really push myself and perhaps I'll be able to do that from now on, I think. I realise now that I'm a lot stronger willed than I thought I was. And the fact that I didn't go through with the steel itself. I'm very pleased with myself. I think the last couple of weeks have been an absolute roller coaster. It's been such a positive experience and I'm on an absolute high at the moment. Everything just
just back to normal, just like you were before, except for all the good stuff that you want to take with you, which you've now created and created for yourself. And that's a way of thanking you for everything that you've done.